Hello and welcome to the video. This is my overview and review of this thing here. This is the Jumper T15. Now Jumper have had a T20 for a while. I did a review of it a while back. I actually really like the T20. I think it's a cracking radio. And they had the T16 as well. And this is the replacement for the T16. This is called the T15. And although it's one number less, um, doesn't mean that it doesn't go all the way up to 11. They have done some different things on this. Obviously, the first thing you're spotting here, of course, is that it isn't gray or black. They have released it in lots of different colors. And for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you'll have seen the Radio Master uh, Boxer, the new version that they did of that, which also has lots of color schemes. So this is obviously the thing to do at the moment. Now, I know I'll be asked, so let's go through the big differences between this and the Boxer, if you've already seen that video. Uh, this one has a color screen rather than the LCD. This one has a slightly different switch arrangement and layout. All the switches on the top of three position. Don't worry, I'll show you how it is in a minute. And crucially for me, they have actually made it so that you can swap out these shoulder buttons for regular switches, which interestingly was something that I talked about in my Boxer review. So let me go through this in a little bit more detail and kind of get into the nitty gritty and show you a little bit more about this new T15. So while I unbox this thing, let me go through the headlines. This again is the T15 from Jumper. It has a three and a half inch color touch, 480 by 320 color IPS screen. Gimbals are full size gimbals and their whole effect. These are their higher end versions of the gimbals. Protocol is either it's available in Express LRS 2.4 gig, which is what this is, or the 915 megahertz optional. Maximum power output is gonna be one watt or 30 dBm. Has a JR module bay at the back, has an SD card built in rather than removable, interestingly. Working voltages that you're gonna need is gonna run off a 2S LiPo or 2700 or 18650. Comes in a case, as you can see here, Size is 185 by 175 by 79 millimeters, and the weight is 481 grams without the battery. So it does feel nice and lightweight. Plastic feel is very good initially. This is those colored kind of plastics, which has that slightly soft touch, which means it, it feels very nice in the hand. Available in different colors, blue, green, purple, yellow, pink, white, and gray. Has a cooling fan on the back. Underneath that, we have a holder for two 21700 batteries. It just has a standard 2S balance connector into the back of the radio. One of the things that I do like here in the back is that there is access to the battery for the memory here. So you can just plug your own LiPo or even two 18650s in a caddy as well. The Jumper VSM Hall Center gimbals are installed by default on this. And let's have a closer look at all the switches. So let's press and hold the power button. Power's up. Welcome to Interestingly, it's saying it's a self-build. So I'm guessing this isn't officially supported yet by the HTX team. But you can see here, one of the first things you notice is there is a lot more lights in here. So the, the way the six button things work is they're white normally, but they go red when you press them. And the two buttons for both the system menu and for the modern model menu are also illuminated as well. Now, as I said in the introduction, this is available in lots and lots of different colors, and that does seem to be what everyone seems to be interested in at the moment. I actually quite like having the option of different colored radios. If you're at the field and you all have the same radio and it all looks the same, it is easy to accidentally pick up the wrong one. So let's go through the controls. On the top, we have a momentary switch on the right shoulder and a latching switch on the left, and we have two plugs covering these things as well. Now, looking on the website, it does appear that they are offering swap outs for these controls here on the top, so you can turn them into switches. I really love that. I wish more of these style radios did it, because for me, as a pilot that doesn't just do quads, does planes and wings as well, these are my arming and my oh dear switches are up here. So these don't really work very well for me, sadly. However, the other switches on here are both three position. So three, 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 and three. Two rotating controls here, um, both with a central detent. The detent is pretty light though. It isn't super massive. Nice gimbals. They are, they are their kind of higher end gimbals with all the 
you know, aluminium CNC flashing in them. They feel very nice. In terms of the position, the way it works, and we'll get to ergonomics in a minute, the piece at the back that you wrap your hand around has this little recess at the top. And you tend to find that your hand goes around it like that if you're a thumber, which makes it super comfy. It's really nicely designed. And the way it just sits in the palm of your hand feels lovely. However, if you're a pincher, then you find that more of your kind of middle finger goes in there and allows you to get to those easily. And there's not a lot between the edge of the gimbal and the edge of the radio, which means you have full and fine control. Power button is here in the middle. And then, interestingly, they've gone for this kind of joystick style of trim. So... You can trim each side, but rather than have separate buttons, they've done it that way. And I'm guessing that's also why these six position switches are also laid out in a slightly different way. However, having played around with this a little bit, I actually really like this layout because if you are flying FPV and you're trying to find that switch, as you move your thumb down, you can feel exactly which is which. So these two switches are actually really, really useful because you can feel it and you can get your thumb to it as you take your thumb off the stick really easily rather than it just being one line of six and you potentially hit one to the left or right of the one you mean to. Down here, we have a slightly different layout from normal because what you'd expect is this is going to be the system and this is the model. Um, and I keep thinking it is. This is actually the telemetry button. If I press this, it's going to take me into the telemetry screens. Whereas actually the two buttons that you need for both the system, which is over here, which gives us access to things like the Express LRS setup and other things like that as well. Um, then you also have this button over here, which is the model button, which is a very different layout from lots of other radios that I've had in here. And it's taken a little bit, and it's still taking a little bit of work for me to kind of figure out exactly which way round everything is. Because for me, that has always been the model button. That's always been the system button, but they have swapped things around. Not sure exactly why they do that, but I'm sure if this was one of your primary radios, you'd learn that very quick. So we have the system button at the top. Underneath it, we have the menu button for the main menu. We have the forwards and backwards, and then we have the cancel button here at the bottom. Navigation is done by a rotary control here. Um, the clicks are, they feel okay. They're not super nice. And then pressing it gives you the enter and that allows you to kind of navigate around. Obviously, this, this is a nice touch screen, so you can do all that kind of fun stuff as well. On the back, then we have an exhaust port for cooling. We have a foldable handle. We have a JR Bay standard size, which I like, means that all of the old mods, modules and everything else can fit in. Uh, just be a little bit careful. This handle doesn't go up super far, so you may find with some older units where the antenna was quite far out the way, it might not fit. Just keep that in mind. And then under here, we have the battery and then that's it. No stuff on the bottom, no stuff on the sides. We can have these kind of nice grips and we have a little fan here to exhaust the warm air while it's running. The only thing I'll mention is the antenna design quite cute and we have um, a three and a half millimeter jack and we have a USB-C port uh, but the antenna does nicely rotate into the 90 degree position which is how I tend to have the antennas on most of my models. So as I said in the introduction I really like the T20 from Jumper it was the first radio that I thought you know what that's actually good enough for me to use as a daily driver. And I do like the smaller, more compact form factors. Some of the radios that we have in the hobby are just too big, but this still manages to cram an awful lot of switches onto a very small form factor, along with a color screen as well. I love the fact that the shoulder controls can be swapped. I know I keep coming back to that, but that for me is a massive deal. That's the way that I fly, and other manufacturers who make similar radios to this don't offer that as an option currently. I love the fact that it comes with a case. That's a really important thing for radios like this to protect both the gimbals and make sure that they don't get damaged. I like the cute design touches like that 
memory cell is actually available and accessible through the battery bay rather than have to take the radio apart. And I know that some won't be excited about the fact it comes in loads of different colours, but then you can get it in grey if you really want to, if you don't want to differentiate yourself and stand out from the crowd. Only a handful of things to be aware of with this, with the playing that I've done here. Uh, don't forget it is Express LRS only, 2.4 and 915 optional. I don't think we're going to see lots of multi-protocol versions of new radios coming out, so if you like multi-protocol stuff, and you haven't got a module, it might be worth one picking one up while they're available. It does feel a little bit more plasticky than the Radio Master Boxer. The Radio Master Boxer feels like a much more solid, well-built radio. However, playing and using this, it has performed nicely, and those gimbals in particular give a really nice feel. The button layout, as I've already talked about, is a little bit non-standard. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but if you are coming from another radio that has a more traditional layout for navigation of Open and HTX, be aware of that. You are going to have to relearn some of that muscle memory. And there is very light detents on the rotary controls and sadly no finger sliders in the shoulders as well for things like pan and tilt and stuff. And you need 21700 cells for the supplied battery caddy. However, because it's a standard 2S, I'm actually using 18650s in the back of mine and it's working fine. So in summary, this is another good design from Jumper following on from the great T20. I really like the fact that they've thought through the customization on the layout of the controls and also thought about the ability to change the shoulder controls as well for those of us that like an additional external switches on there rather than the push buttons. And radio layout is a very personal thing. So there's no such thing as one perfect radio for all. And I appreciate that some of the things that I like on this, you might not and vice versa. However, this is a nice all round radio for Jumper and they continue to improve with their designs and they're obviously listening to what we're asking for as pilots. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.